Now, the image on my monitor over there is coming from what I have here in my hand. This long stick, and on the end of it is a uh, little piece of ruler. And the image from the ruler is being picked up by this lens, which is a zoom lens. And over here is a television camera. It's a small right. camera. Isn't it, though? Then the image goes down here through the wire over to the monitor. Now, I've got a ruler, and these are millimeters. Now, I'll move it so that one of them is lined up with the left edge. And how many millimeters can you see now? Well, there's 5, 10, 15. And there's 16, 17, 18, 18 millimeters. Okay, but now measure the width of the screen. There's a ruler right there. Well, it's about 30 centimeters. Okay, which is how many millimeters? 300 millimeters. Okay, so divide 300 millimeters by 18 to find out how much we're magnifying. 16.66, and then it keeps going with sixes. Right. So just 16 times, roughly. Okay, now I'll zoom up. And I'll have to refocus. Okay, how many millimeters do you see now? Well, there's 2.5 or okay. two and a half. And remember the whole, the uh, whole screen now when we're at high magnification is 2.5 uh, millimeters. And now m divide that into 300, right? Okay. It's 120. Okay, so at high magnification, we're magnifying how much? 120, 120 times. times. Right. Okay, now I, with this microscope set up, I have problems for you to solve. Um, here is a needle, real okay. skinny little needle. Yeah. And there's an eye in the needle, obviously, that thread goes through, right? Yeah. I want you to tell me the length of the eye. Hmm, it's a little too small to see. A little measure. too small to see. Well, when scientists are confronted by that problem, they put the thing they want to measure onto the microscope. There's the eye of the needle at low magnification. Here it is at high magnification. What was the length of the screen at high magnification? It was 2.5. Okay, and what's, uh, so how big is the eye of the needle? Well, it's about half. About half, and so that means it's how long? Well, it would be 1.25 then. Right. Yeah. And scientists use this system to look at uh, very, very small things like the hair on the leg of a fly or the bacteria on the hair on the leg of the fly. And they have developed a special set of, of uh, measurements called microns in which they've taken a millimeter and divided it into a thousand parts because they're looking at things that are so small. Okay, well, that was a good one. That was relatively easy to solve with it. Yeah. Now here's another problem for you. You're an engineer working in a place where they manufacture light bulbs and you have to design the light bulb with a filament. And the filament has to be about that long in order to get the right kind of resistance and the right amount of light on it. Okay. But you can't have a light bulb that big. No, it'd be so how are you going to get that much wire down into a side of light bulb? I don't know. Well, here's their solution to it. Oh, it's a coil. Yes, that's one side of the, uh, of the, co of the filament. See, that's the part that sticks up right there. Yeah. Uh, but that's still not enough. Watch, when I go up a little bit, you'll see. Now I'll just focus. Well, it's a coil within a coil, because this yeah. is coiled there, and right. then that's it's a, coiled it's a, there. They've, they've coiled the coil in order to get that whole length of wire inside a light bulb. Very good. One last problem for you to solve. And that is, you've lighted a candle. You know, oh, yeah. a candle burns with a flame. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a candle. The question is, how come the solid wax can rise up into the wick? I don't know. Well, let's see what happens when we light it. See, there's some matches over there, Tyler. Oh, yeah, right here. OK. Shall I light it? Yeah, go ahead, light it. You should see the, the match under magnification. Now, watch. I'll zoom up just a little bit. You see the currents? Yeah, it, the wax is flowing up into yes. the wick. First of all, the flame melts the wax, right? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so now it's in liquid form, and now do a, a, a phenomenon called capillary action. It can flow up the, the little strands in the wick. It's like water, you know, when you blot it up with a paper towel. Yeah, you know, it absorbs towel, it. Soaks it up okay, there. but now look at the black part of the wick up there. I'll zoom up a little more. I'll refocus. It's bubbling. Yes, because for something to burn, it has to be changed to a gas to combine with a gas and uh, oxygen in the air. So the flame is actually heating the, the liquid to make it boil to change it to a vapor. And that's all happening right there in the candle wick. Candles are really sophisticated. Yes, isn't it? Okay. Now you've solved all the problems. We only have one left, and that's to blow out the candle. <laughs>